All right, Finnegan's Wake Action Hour. Here we go, you guys. I see a few of you guys are already here and uh, going crazy in the comments. Love it. Go ahead. Talk about whatever. Um, I, I looked over all your comments. Yes. The end. <laughs> I don't really have anything to add. Or do I? Let me see. Uh, Kevin is mentioning... Oh, I guess we're starting... I don't, I don't even know how to introduce this thing. So, last week I talked about Percy O'Reilly, the Ballad of Percy O'Reilly. And then, like, literally an hour or two after <laughs> that, um, I saw... The, I found this web page. I don't even know who this person is, but, but somebody... Harlot's Curse, I guess that's their their username on this blog site. They posted... They actually have a lot of posts about Finnegan's Wake... A lot of research, a lot of annotations and stuff that looks really good. Not, I don't find the the website the easiest to organ like to. There's not like a good index of of all these. Anyway, it's a little confusing. But this I linked in the comments to the the main page about Percy O'Reilly. It has a lot of information. I'm not going to go through it all. I'm just going to touch on a few things. And this may be a shorter episode. I don't know. I mean, last time. Somehow it went on for two hours. I have no idea how that happened. But I'm just going to make a few quick comments. And then anything else I have to comment on about or anything you guys want to add and discuss, we can bring up. Uh, let me just see, though, in the comments if you guys have anything I need to respond to. Welcome, y'all. Kevin, Alan, Al. Looks like you guys are the ones that are definitely here. Who knows who else is here? lurking in the background, but, um, I see Kevin, you're saying, Kevin Smith, you're saying Eblina is one of the first mentions of Dublin and possible Ireland from an external view point. It is mentioned in Geographia of Claudius Ptolemaeus, Ptolemy, who was a Greek astronomer cartographer. I looked, yeah, I was looking at Eblina and I guess it's kind of unclear if it if it is Dublin or if it's north of Dublin, but it's definitely near Dublin if it's not if it's not Dublin itself and it's uh uh yeah <laughs> I didn't know that that was mentioned though back then in Ptolemy so uh, Ptolemy Greek astronomer yeah that's fascinating I, I'd be uh, curious to hear what he had to say if anyone uh, knows knows where that's at exactly. Well, you say it's in, wait, no, it's in mentioned Geographia of Claude. I, I should look that up. I'll try to remember. Let me write that down. I'm curious what he had to say. Out of paper. Geographia. All right. So let's just uh, blaze through the um, the the notes. Uh, oh, Nicholas Morse here as well. Oh, thanks for the the plug for my, my, my ballad. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm never happy at, at this point with my music production, uh, because I'm just music production, is such a vast topic and things you have so much to learn. And I, I, I almost immediately after I published it, I was like not happy with it. And I realized things I could have done better with the panning and you know, whatever, but I appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for the compliment. Cause I'm trying to get better at music production. It's just, uh, a challenging thing. So, um, put in a Wikipedia link there, but, uh, you, oh, you put in a Wikipedia link? Where? Or maybe, I don't know if YouTube's blocking links other people post, but I don't see a link. Oh, no, no, I don't see a link. Uh, did you, Kevin, did you post that in the chat? Because I did not see it. But, um, if that, if that is the case, I'll try and fix that because be, I would rather have you guys be able to post links. Um, yeah, I don't know if I can... Uh, I, I meant to turn on closed captions as well. Anyways, let's. Uh, I'm just going to get started though and uh, feel free to, to... Oh, you had to quote it. Okay. Yeah, I guess maybe... I'll try and fix that because I would rather have you guys be able to post links, but I don't. I can't do it right now. All right, let's, uh, if you guys want to follow along on the, uh, this, this Hive blog that I linked to at the very top of the chat, it's, uh, I'm just going to make a few mentions. So one thing that I found very interesting is that almost right at the top, we get 
the first draft version of the Ballad of Percy O'Reilly. And there are other early draft versions of uh, things from Finnegan's Wake that, because a lot of it was published in magazine form. And this one, though, is um, definitely unfinished because there's even like blank spots, like where Joyce was trying to figure out the lyrics. And some of the lyrics, most of the lyrics are pretty sim similar. Like, for example, uh, I'm not going to post the whole thing, but I wanted to show just one example of something, and that is the the first stanza, which is, uh, and the other one, I'll, I'll, I'm not going to post the other one, but this, this is the first version, which is, have you heard of Humpty Dumpty, which in the other version is, have you heard of one Humpty Dumpty, how he fell with a roll and a rumble, that's pretty much the same, and high fat, like Oliver Crumble, high fat, like, <laughs> that's very different, it's, in the other one, it's, um, I fell with a roll and curled up like Sir Olafa Crumble, I believe. Um, so this is a little more obvious that this is an Oliver Cromwell reference too, which in the other final version, it's not quite as clear, I think. Uh, but yeah, there's, there's almost no doubt in my mind now that this Oliver Cromwell, one of you guys mentioned that, I can't remember who, but yeah, I appreciate that. And then but behind the magazine wall of the magazine wall, so there's just little changes and if you see the earlier versions of other things a lot of the times pretty much what what he does is is almost the opposite of like Hemingway where Hemingway seems to try and get things down as simple as possible and remove any superfluous uh any any junk matter that may not have anything to do with each sentence he wants everything to be as tight and clean as possible whereas Joyce is he'll begin with something like this and he'll, he'll include as many puns and as many, uh, you know, as many, uh, what do you call them? Digressions as possible. So, uh, I just wanted to show that to show Joyce's method and, uh, yeah, you can go and check out the rest of it. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. So, oh, but also when talking about the magazine wall, uh, the butt of the magazine wall, I learned that there is actually this fort in, Phoenix Park, which I did not know about. And it has an interesting shape, right? It looks almost, first I thought it looked kind of like a Star of David or something, uh, but it's, I don't know how you would describe this shape, but, but I guess it does have a, a magazine wall and that's probably what Joyce is referring to. It was just an opportunity for me to include a picture. All right, let's go on. So there's the first draft version that I advise you all to check out. There's, let's see, the mu he talks a little more about the music. I didn't talk much about the music at all. I just talked about the lyrics. It's written in A major, 6-8 time. Uh, there's, there was like, uh, yeah, I'm not going to go too much in the music part. And let's keep moving on. One thing that I noticed was that, um, that I didn't really think about was that the, the ballad begins talking about Humpty Dumpty and it ends talking about Humpty Dumpty. So kind of like with with um, the book itself, and this is something we saw in Ulysses with Wandering Rocks, that the section is uh, a bit of like a you know fractal or a microcosm of the whole, and you know it it has a circular nature. It like begins and then it ends where it begins. So that that was kind of neat. I, I didn't really pick up on that until I read about it. Anything else? Let's see. Uh, there, there, he talks about something with old parsnip. There, there's a line about like uh, they're talking about HCE, and he says like, uh, and now he's kicked about like an old parsnip or something like that. And I, I didn't really think about it, but he links to something, some somebody named Old Par, which what is Old Par? I didn't, I didn't follow up on it, so I want to see what it is. I mean, these are the kind of things that you can follow up on it as much as you want. And sometimes they're fruitful. Sometimes they just seem to kind of go nowhere, but then later on you can link them up. So it says, Thomas Parr was an Englishman who said, who was said to have lived for 152 years, 152 years. Wow. <laughs> so, so on Wikipedia, I've never seen this. It says, it says he was born around 1482 reputedly, and then he lived to 1635. Okay, um, well, that's quite a lifetime. So, in terms of the ballad, though, 
we'll get back to that. Now he's, I don't know. <laughs> now he's kicked about like an old parsnip. I don't, I don't know. That seems like a stretch because, um, or maybe just in the sense that, you know, HCE is like an eternal figure. So maybe he's like long lived in that sense. That, that seems like me a, a bit of a stretch, but who knows? According to, uh, this on the first page of Finnegan's Wake, old par is mentioned. Is that true? Let me, let me take a look at the first page. Um, you guys are making the comments. Hem, Hemingway simplified English to show the emotion between the words. Joyce gave us meaning beyond the words within and without, gave a new life to a language in one, in one might, in one might. Giving, gave a new life to, oh, in one night. Kive, yeah, okay. Yeah, um, but I wanted to look, let's look on the, the first page of Finnegan's Wake. Can we find a reference to Old Par? Uh, Finnegan's Wake online. Old par. So let's see. River Run. Where's this old par reference? And if you guys know where it's at, please let me know. I don't see. I'm not seeing a reference to old any par. Hmm. Yeah, I don't see it, but. That doesn't mean it's there. So please, if, if you guys can see a reference to old par on the first page of Finnegan's Wake, do enlighten me because I'm not seeing anything. It just might be well hidden though. Mm. Yeah, nothing's coming up to me, to my eyeball. Okay, so I'll leave it there. Where are we, you guys? Line 19. Oh, Alan's saying line 19. Wall straight, old par. Okay, let me look at that again. No, oh, okay. Oh, it's, oh, yeah, okay, I see. Oh, yeah, so the line, it's in the second, no, the third, third paragraph. The fall, I'm not going to read the words because it's real long. Blah, 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 whatever. Of a once Wall Street old par. Well, old par, yeah, I could see that. It being Because par is supposedly old. You know, he lived 152. Is retailed early in bed and later on life down through all Christian minstrelsy. Okay, yeah, so that is, there is a, an old par reference. Interesting. So if you connect that with parsnip, that's possible. Although... Joyce could have spelled it P-A-R-R-S-N-I-P -R -R and he didn't. But that could just be one of those things that he didn't get to and who knows. So anyways, uh, let's move on. Dublin's Mountjoy Jail, founded in 1850. Mm. Butter's Horns. Uh, we talked about Sheriff Clancy the model for Long John Fanning. It's interesting that in Ulysses, Long John Fanning, if, he, if Sheriff Clancy was, you know, the, the source for John, Long John Fanning, why not just call him Sheriff, Sheriff Clancy? Why, why change his name? Because <laughs> there are so many people in Ulysses that names, whose names are not changed. So, interesting. Mm. Like I said, this may not be the longest, uh, Thing is wake action hour, you guys, but uh, we'll see. I've been uh, reading and kind of learning a lot about writing systems lately, which is fascinating because uh, it's just amazing, <laughs> like how how the writing systems developed initially, like the earliest ones, like um, supposedly uh, you know cuneiform and Sumerian was was like the first writing system, and then the Egyptians either independently or about the same time came along with hieroglyphics and then um but neither of them was that efficient it wasn't really until the alphabet came along that that it really allowed it to uh, do all these things and be transferred to other languages and uh the the connecting that though like learning about what's it called the rosetta stone and all these things is uh 
It's just very fascinating. I, I, have, a, I have a few books about writing that I've been reading that I may talk about in the future because, uh, or also Chinese too, because the Chinese writing system, and I'm, I'm, I'm in Japan studying a lot of Japanese, which incorporates the, the Chinese writing system and then uses two other writing systems as well. It's just, uh, as John McWhorter calls it, uh, like a glorious nightmare or something. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's fascinating that Chinese was as, that it, that it lives on the way it does because it's, in a sense, it's, it's interesting because it, it's so complicated, but it, in, in another sense, it, it sort of makes, uh, you know, for to be, if you want to be, you know, a literate person in China, you have to study thousands of kan, not kanji, but I don't know what they're called in Chinese, but uh, the characters, Chinese characters, and uh, in Japanese, they're called kanji. But anyways, uh, enough about that, that aggression into uh, Al Om is saying the Ocom, the Ogam alphabet may be older than them all, ancient Celtic roots. I, I've been meaning to learn about like uh, runes and Celtic writing systems because I don't know much about them. That that is interesting. If you, if you have any book recommendations, feel free to leave uh, leave a comment with that. Oh really? The I Ching, not as old as Ogam. Okay, yeah, I don't know anything about Ogam, so I'll, I should uh, I'll put that in my notes too. To, learn a little about but the two books well I'll, I think I'll hold off on the books because I, I don't like to recommend both books until I finish them and kind of can give give an actual recommendation or not Om is how it is pronounced Om oh so it's not pronounced Om it's pronounced Om like like uh, like in uh, chanting Om <laughs> okay like like your last name Al Om <laughs> is that how that came about okay um let me, let me, let's wrap up Percy O'Reilly and then we can take this wherever else. Um, this guy and this website, like the link that I said at the top is pretty, has a lot of information. I'm just not going to go into it all though, because it's, it's, a, you can go as deep into this as you want. Uh, yeah, I think, I, I think that's the main thing. So let me check my notes just to make sure I didn't leave anything else out. Oh, one thing I, I mentioned last time, I there's there's the part where they're talking about Earwicker H C E and he, the the hostie, the guy singing the, the ran, he says he's the how does he put it? He's the uh I should just have the lyrics before me. He's the I can't remember the term now. Okay, so he's talking about, okay, yeah, he says he ought, they're talking about HCE, he ought to blush for himself, the old hay-headed philosopher, for to go and shove himself that way on top of her, begob, he's the crux of the catalog of our antediluvial zoo. I was, I think in the last one, I said antediluvial, antediluvian, that means uh, after the flood, but I, then I thought about it. Because in Spanish, antes means before, I believe. So I was, and probably in French and other Latin languages. So I was thinking, uh, it's not after the flood; it's before the flood. So, um, so that that's kind of changes my take on it because it's it's almost like how do you, you don't really describe some situation as as antediluvial when you're in that situation. Like you don't know that a flood's coming. But if you do know that it, like some disaster is coming, it's almost like stepping into that, that form of history where you can see it as cyclical, as you can see it as these, these uh, different stages of history that are going to be transcended and moved on to. So it's, it's almost like a, um, like a pop apocalyptic, apocalyptic vision of uh, which a lot of, you know, a lot of Christian uh, literature is and it's essentially this view that something's gonna well there's different takes on it I'm not gonna go into all the different interpretations of Christianity and all that so 
but yeah, a lot of it is, is the idea that something is going to happen. Some, uh, some end game. Is gonna <laughs> so, uh, I just wanted to correct my, uh, my statement that antediluvial antediluvian is after the flood, it's before the flood and being aware of that, that we're living in some era before some flood and other notes. Uh, I've just been finishing up this John McWhorter language course, linguistics, which is really good. I recommended it before. And uh, he he kind of describes language as fashion. Like, it, you know, we have these ideas about good and bad grammar that are very prescriptive. But if you, uh, you know, if you jump back at that, like 100 years, you can see some change in language. If you jump back 500 years, like if you look at Shakespeare, you can see a lot of changes in language, but if you jump back like a thousand years, you won't even know what you're reading. <laughs> and <laughs> I put in my notes, that's right, I'm looking at you, Beowulf. I don't know what I'm thinking. But yeah, the idea that that the language doesn't change, that it, that we've we've kind of been building up English to this modern thing and that now, lang now English is finished, it's not gonna change anymore, is ridiculous. And I think Joyce was trying to show that there, um, I mean, it's, 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 in some ways, it's like the most revolutionary thing you can do with language is just say that, uh, you can do whatever you want with it and take it into whatever territory you want. And it is like fashion. So you may not like Finnegan's Wake, but there's nothing like wrong with it in any sense. Um, but art and media and communication, again, I'm just reading off my notes. I, I was thinking about how when language came along, and we don't know exactly when language happened. Some people say like a, a hundred thousand years ago when we first began to have some kind of uh, speech ability. <laughs> but again, we don't have any record to know, so it's, it's hard to estimate. But at some point long ago, language came along. And then for most of human history, you know, let's say if, if, if language began at at midnight and then the next midnight is is now 24 hours have passed supposedly writing came along you know after 11 p.m certainly very late in the game and just since writing has come along which is this like annotation system for reality which i mean language is too but as a as a more permanent way of doing that writing is is something that lives outside of people in a way that speech doesn't so as soon as writing came along, it just changed human history like overnight. Well, not overnight, you know, but this is that thing that, you know, Robert Anton Wilson and Terrence McKenna and all these other guys talked about is that history is like somehow building momentum and uh, getting faster and things are happening faster and that we, it is moving us into these new dimensions that would be impossible and that the speed of, of, change that brought on by writing just in the last few thousand years is enormous and then now that we have even quicker copying mechanisms the world wide web that's that's bringing on its own speed changes so are these the things that are shifting us through these different viconian ages who knows um, but we we've also arrived at this point too where these annotations which are our art media communication they at first they they lived alongside us with with the more physical world but then now we've gotten to the point where we have cities we have virtual reality where you can enter these places where there's nothing but annotations there's annotations on an annotations uh turtles all the way down or whatever that that metaphor is for <laughs> you know uh, so that's all i had to say about that See, I think that's the main points I wanted to talk about this week. Let's see if you guys have any comments that I need to mention. Yeah, the jumping Jesus phenomenon is that Robert Anton Wilson called it. Al Ohm is talking about a placeholder for a concept or an object. I mean, also, this is a. Uh, there, there's a lot of debate, you know, about that. The what's it called the Worf-Sapir hypothesis that language 
is like uh, how, how much influence does language have over what we think and is it, it, it like are we able to have concepts without language and uh, not, Mc, John McWhorter's take is that the Worf superior hypothesis is it, it really oversteps its bounds but it may have some level of truth and um, but it's just like it kind of gets uh, he uses the example of Hopi language, which the war wait, is it Worf or Sapir? I think it was Worf. Yeah, he was the one who popularized it. He gave lectures talking about Hopi that Hopi doesn't have the sense of, of past and future tenses that English does. So that that makes it more of a a time free uh, conception of the universe. But then <clears throat> again, I'm not an expert on Hopi, but he, he, McWhorter says that, no, that's not exactly true. You can talk about the past and the future, just uh, use a slightly different way. And that it's kind of like a romantic vision of, of um, non, non quote unquote, Western civilization is, it's a little blown out of, out of control, but um, <laughs> uh, I don't know, ba Basho, is that how you say it? Uh, you know, actually, um, I'm trying to remember that I talked about Momus last week. Did he, I feel like Momus has a Basho reference in one of his songs, 10 foot hut. Let me, let me see if that is, if I'm remembering correctly. It's one of my favorite Momus songs. No, actually live as Chome. Who's Chome? Isn't Chome a poet? Mm. Yeah, I'm starting to wander with my uh, my annotations. So you're saying that uh, it began with Nietzsche, but uh, you're saying they're wrong. Can you explain, like? Uh, so you're saying that uh, you think that language doesn't influence uh, how we think is, is what you're saying, if I'm understanding you correctly, but feel free to clarify. Mm. Um, yeah, so I, I don't, you know, I'm not a linguist. I'm not, see Kevin saying, I don't know who, but some intellectuals have argued babies have to have some sort of base language inbuilt before they learn by initiating oh i think you mean like chomsky yeah um the idea that there is this uh inbuilt grammar and yeah i've heard that too but uh I, like i said i'm not a linguist i'm just like more putting these ideas out there and kind of playing with them and seeing i, I think that that's my whole approach with this series is to do like uh McLuhan's term of a probe and just to explore these ideas rather than saying that this is one way or the other but yeah Joyce was definitely familiar with Nietzsche and probably that idea. So, uh, I mean, we could certainly have thoughts without language. I mean, we have, you know, we can hear music in our head. We can see things we can have thing experiences, but it's just a question of like, when we have these conceptions of language, I was talking with a non-native English speaker the other day and explaining she, she was, she works in a, a dentist office and sometimes she has to talk with people about, um, give instructions in English to give it x-rays. And one of the, her things was she wants the person to step forward into the, the device or whatever. So, um, so I told her she can say, you can take a step forward and, um, and she said, uh, why take, why take a step? <laughs> it's like, where are you taking? So there's all these things in languages that are, um, you know, very arbitrary that when you look at other, when you start learning other languages, you realize, especially a lot of like prepositions and stuff that there's like, why this, why that, why, why do you do, do, you do these things? And, um, in, in Japanese, Chinese, and a lot of other languages, I don't know if it's more beyond Asia, but definitely a lot of Asian languages, there's counters where, uh, we, we do that. We have them a, f a little in English, like with a slice of bread. You don't just say a bread, you say a slice of bread or a loaf of bread. 
but with a lot of languages like Chinese and Japanese, pretty much everything has a counter in which you have to know. And sometimes the, the groups of things that classify, get classified together are very weird. <laughs> like, um, let me, let me give you an example just to show you, um, how things are grouped and like, okay, so there's three, 350 Japanese counter. I don't know if that's true, but there's a lot of them. Um, I don't know, think you need to know all of them, but and there's a counter to count birds. There's a counter to count years, but I'm, I'm looking for one of the like really weird ones, like where things like Okay, I'm not finding one off the top of my head, but uh, I, I remember with Thai, there were a lot of weird counters too, like things that you wouldn't expect are grouped together. And it's just like, you, if, if, you, if you design the language logically, you would not do that, but the, the way languages develop are just kind of like Finnegan's Wake. They're very abstract. <laughs> they're not, it's not like, uh, you know, there may be a general pattern to it underneath, but I think, uh, you know, as, as language evolves and bumps along, it, it doesn't play by the rules. All right. Yeah. So I think, um, I, I, I did this, this, uh, this week's episode two, two weeks in a row, like, which is pretty incredible for me. I got usually I have, I'll have months between these and I, I wish I could do them more rapidly, but the fact is I, I just can't read that fast, that many books. I have other things to do and stuff. <laughs> But I think I will, uh, I'm going to wrap up uh, the Anthony Burgess book, The Shorter Finnegan's Wake. I'm only about halfway through that, but uh, 100 pages left. I, it's helping a lot, but it's not, it's still not ideal. And I still haven't found my, my, my best book to recommend for people just starting Finnegan's Wake. So I'm, I have a, several options that when I finish the Burgess book, I will attempt and see if they are a little more accessible. I'm not quite sure which one I'll go with, but I think once I finish that, then I'll do my next episode. Unless something else pops up that I see as an easy, an easy way to, to do these. But uh, other than that, unless you guys have any final uh, things you want to discuss, I'm gonna think. I think I'll wrap it up. And uh, how long have I been on? 49 minutes. That's not bad. That's about almost an action hour. <laughs> and um, yeah, I think uh, I'll have more to discuss next time help you and me make deeper inroads into finning his wake so um yeah i'm gonna wrap it up and have a great day morning afternoon evening wherever whatever <laughs> whatever you are and uh see you guys later take care